Okay. There you go. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. <laughs> We just have to pretend that this is we're just meeting right now, even though we've already talked for 10 minutes before the session. We just it's it's sort of like a theatrical thing. Hey, good to see yeah, you. Blah, blah, blah. That's true. Because everything is fake in, in truth, isn't it? Kind of. Kind and of. Yes and no, I would say. Yes mm -hmm. and no. Exactly correct. Yes. Yeah. But you had a topic you wanted to talk about. Well, I've been thinking about group dynamics. Um. You know, I'm I'm right in the middle of struggling with group dynamics, online group dynamics, which are self-organizing. You know, self-organizing groups that come together on the internet. We have the parallax sangha, and 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 you know how to let's say create an an, an actual community from this virtual community, and the fact that the virtual communities are well, e Alex Ebert was saying. You know they're 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 destructive, right? Communities are on the internet are are kind of destructive. He was saying like in our talk the other day in the IDW extravaganza, I was thinking about this because there's no structure, and you have to create a structure, otherwise the group is going to commit suicide. Um, does that make sense? Well, so it I've depends been, on what working, you mean with structure. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to create, because there's no boundaries. You get a bunch of people together from different places in the world. You know, maybe they have a common interest or something like that. And then they're, 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 they're thrown in, they're in, they're in a virtual room together with their projections and their, and their drives and their attractions and their dislikes and their, you know, it can go sideways pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, and so I've been thinking about how how to have proper communities online that don't go sideways, and I'm I'm thinking about, you know, what kind of structures that need to kind of emerge, if, what kind of structures, and maybe the structure is slightly different from each with each group depending on yep. who they are and what they're doing. But I think there's some universals there too. Like there's some there's there's some universals in terms of what makes a good or there's some what makes a good group structure. So I don't know what those are necessarily, but but I'm. I have I'm an idea. Thinking about it and working on it. Go ahead. No, I was t I was thinking the last days about you know epistemic humility, um, mm -hmm. and and isms. So that's the thing that Robert Anton Wilson talked about a lot, and Ken Wilber also. And so that's the inherent idea that things are, you know, and that, that you it's like you have a discussion. So what is religion? What is the uh, origin of religion right mm -hmm. and so you have like competing ideas and both parties in a group are saying no it's like this religion or the origin of religion is this yeah. and this that and so by this ism you create a, 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 a schism right yeah. a conflict this so becomes that, schism that's good yeah because as as robert anton wilson said there is no is you can't it's like yeah that you you can't really know how, what was the origin of religion let's say that you know it's like you can mm -hmm. approach that like tangentially and so ken wilber famously said okay you, if you have like two parties arguing it's not either or it's as well as you know both explanations both and. yeah yeah both and are kind of true and then you have also you know the negation of that it's neither nor and that is like it's neither of those descriptions because there's always something that is unknown and mm. to have like this whole encompassing integral notion of how to approach a topic uh, uh both and and neither nor then you have like this epistemic kind of uh, humility humility is that the word yep humility and then yeah, that, you, that's good. A, and if you have a culture of people who kind of adhere to this principle then, then you can have like a constructive dialogue because the, this is like an internal structure, and then you don't have the schism of fighting. <clears throat> There's so much there huh? uh, uh, that, that comes to mind when you when you when you talk about that. Um, yeah, yeah, the both and thing needs the, the neither nor because if, if it's just both and, it's just affirmation, and people just affirming each other don't get anywhere, and there's no there's no constructive dialectic going on. It's just yeah. it's just it's just. Uh, it's just a group hug, right? Right. Uh, 
when then and then the negation creeps up because because people are not uh, uh, people uh, people are not in touch with the negation yeah. um and so so then then uh, then what is all sweetness and light uh, and milk and honey turns into the war of all against all um that often happens uh so uh i think that i think that the the yeah the the trick is the trick is it's a very fine line it's it's a it's a balance yeah and i was also thinking about one of the problems here is that you know there's religious structures since the beginning of the time you know i used to practice zen you know and zen has very zen's not very moralistic it's not good and evil oriented it's not 10 commandments yeah on the other hand there's ethicals there's ethics which are which are in place which have been practiced for thousands of years uh like you bow to people in the beginning or something like that right or yeah. like i was looking at the when i practice zen you say you say when you do a practice you say i vow to liberate all beings uh and then you say i vow to free myself from my own neurosis and you say i vow to i vow for wisdom i vow to open the doors of what they have this beautiful phrase dharma gates beyond measure i vow to penetrate right so you have an yeah. aspiration towards wisdom you have you're making the aspiration to like overcome your own neurosis and, and also you're making the aspiration to not be an egomaniac and and, and give whatever you 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 in whatever whatever you you give they call they call it dedicating the merit you give whatever you you have back to the community so there's yeah. a there's an ethic in place that's worked for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and then people have sort of thrown away religion and and then and then they're, they find themselves in in the structure and all the religious problems are coming up but they don't have solutions for them right yeah, no, it's like what happened with modernity, right? And so that that was it's the like argument of modernity. And so that was, was what what Wilbur was arguing that as long as you're using is and this kind of scientific world that it it works within the realm of scientific to say is, you know, and when you get rid of all the religious rituals. But apart from that, outside of that narrow worldview, it doesn't really work. And so you have to kind of account for the, the old rituals and the uh, uh, epistemic humidity that you can't really know. And so you have to have r rituals in place to, you know, to um, make that work again, I think. Yeah, you need rituals, you need boundaries, you need ethics, um, you need agreed on principles. Yeah. You know, to a certain extent, and and uh the reason why uh, online groups are insane is because people get together because they have like a common interest but they don't have those things they don't have all the they don't have the different multi levels of of ritual at work at work uh for them so so they have to kind of invent it themselves as they go along and through trial and error and uh and uh it doesn't always end well yeah that's that's just um that's just clear and I've seen that and you know I've been in a lot of groups and and it's it, I was thinking this today too also I've been in a lot of groups and I started off going to Buddhist centers and Zen groups and then Vajrayana groups and and kind of like in my 20s I explored a lot of these different uh you know Buddhist centers and and uh some Hindu places as well and um and what I discovered is a lot of people are together this is be pre social media internet etc like there's still internet but kind of pre-social media pre uh zoom in the pre yeah. in the pre zoom world in the pre online community world people would get together a lot of people and they would do med something like meditation together and they had nothing in common with each other so there would be conflict they were they just wanted to meditate <laughs> so they were a buddhist sangha but the one they all want to meditate but they're all different types of people they're intellectual people there's you know guys that are just like to dig dig in a garden there's yeah. other guys that are sort of engineer types and so there's a bunch of all kinds of different people we're trying to work together and that doesn't often work either because because everybody's so different and you can't find people that, that you have something in common with right and then you have this new situation where you can find people you have something in common with like you're all kind of like in our group we're all kind of like art artsy intellectual types right uh and we all have sort of common there's some there's something quite a lot in common we've we've got together not through geography not through time and space but because we have something in common <coughs> and um and that's and and that's very very interesting except that we we, we might be lacking uh diversity in the sense of we don't have a 
a, a humble uh, down to earth guy who likes to dig the garden we have just a bunch of intellectuals and artists and when they they don't have management they they they're at each other's throats um you know if you have art artists a bunch of artists and you put them in one place together it's like lord of the flies right yeah because there's no there's no guy who, there's no there's no business guy there's no marketing guy there's no uh, you know uh, now, what anyway. I what I find interesting is the thesis of Professor Möller because he says with the advent of social media the age of profilicity started and before mm. that that was the age of authenticity and so right. now when pe when people come together um, it's not about like an you know, authentic kind of exchange it's it's always profile building and you see that because uh, lots of this is not it's not embodied. You know, so if you if you look at certain spiritual communities and groups in the internet, they presume to have a higher consciousness, but they're still using coming back to the isms, the lingo of a modernistic worldview. And as as long as you're using the lingo of a modernistic worldview, you can't really be have a higher consciousness, right? And so because it's because worldview and language is so connected, so and so that that means you have people that are profile building. Um, but that really has nothing to do with like authentic embodiment of what they're talking about. And that creates like a rift in online, online groups because yeah, it's just well, profiles that are kind of clashing with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know I what guess I mean? There's always been people who are trying to, you know, get power and, and ha be, sure. mm -hmm. you know, have, have a high profile and, you know, and there's always power games at, at work, uh, in every yeah, community, and there's always people who are authentic, um, and there's people who are who are sociopaths and they want to control and run, you know. And there's there's always kind of the same human dynamics at work. And um, I wouldn't put it so starkly because I think there's a lot, you know, in 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 our group, for example, there's 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 a lot of authentic authenticity um, because it's a private group right and so so right. uh, so we're not we're not creating a profile for the world we do our wednesday night things where that that's a public event oh, okay and then, mm -hmm. then our inner group is 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 we're, we're working with each other and there's there's incredible amounts of of uh sure. cre mm -hmm. creative exchange it just means but we're also working with each other in a post-religious um context uh um uh, with different um different world views all you know, you know, it is like the postmodern state where everybody is a different religion, a different culture, a different, you know, everybody is not, not and how do I say that? Oh, I, I'm, I'm kind of contradicting myself because before I said we all, we have common interests and there, that's to a certain extent true. Uh, but the other, but the other thing is that um, the, the, um, the, uh, and that's great. I mean, that's, it's, it's very interesting. That we right. can get together and bring to get bring together a bunch of people, but I think there's we have to there has to be certain steps that have to be taken. Like first, create a boundary, create ethical principles. Okay, have real live events outside of the online world and meet, yeah. meet each other in person. Um, uh, connect on a on a on a on a, on an embodied level as well. Yeah, um, create events that are so you have to have this sort of. John Verveke talks about. Um, you know, uh, what does he call it? Opponent processing. So there has to be an opponent processing between the real live world events and then the um, and then the actual online events. I think to a certain extent that is happening in, in, in not just our community, but other communities. Like people are doing that. People are kind of like, okay, we've been online doing this thing for a while. And then, okay, we got to meet in person. So we fly to a city. We all meet each other. We have an event together. We bond. And then, and then there's a, then, then, you know, and then, then it gets kind of more interesting. Yeah, but, you, need, uh, but, you need real life uh, uh, events to build trust. You can't really build trust yeah. on like exclusively uh, via via online. That doesn't really work, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you can you can go pretty far with you can go further than people people would 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 think or imagine. I think you could you can do a lot, but you do have to step out of the screen and. That's and that's what I mean. It's like yeah. it's like all 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 the people that we are engaging with. We knew at least in some form or another, uh, you know, from from offline events. Yes. You know, and so yes. that's yeah. that's that's the lifeblood. Without that, you know, it's like uh, it's really hard to trust somebody uh, 
on a, on a fundamental level, on a, you know, without without engaging in a real world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and and it's just a natural process, right? Because if you just have a relationship with somebody online all the time, you, just the motion of eros will mean that you have to go and meet that person, like you have to go and see them, and you have to go, yeah. and, you know, give them a hug or whatever. I mean, that's the reason why I don't really like things like Twitter or 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 or, or, uh -huh. or, or Facebook because it's just it's just divisive. It's like everybody is signaling, nobody is talking. Everybody takes the worst interpretations of what somebody said. It's just you know, it's just conflict and it's it's conflict and signaling. It's just it's just so tiring to me. You know, I there are people. Well, it's a profane world. It's the marketplace. You can't get rid of it. It's there. You know. I know. I mean, you. What? What should we do? Is, is it like an ethical question? Like Zach Stein would say, get off it. It's it's exploitative, right? It just kind of they make money off your emotions. You 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 post whatever, and and uh, it, it destroys your attention. And uh, you know, yeah. A, this kind of communication is fundamentally negative whereas this kind of communication what we're doing now is is quite positive because it's a it's a um it's a long form in depth endeavor right so in a certain sense since i agree with zach when he says that it is quite destructive but i think you have to get good at kind of going into the the marketplace or going into the morgue <laughs> you know or the police station <clears throat> or that those are horrible places as well but you have to go there and uh to do your business and then come out again that's kind of how i see it it's really hard to create like you to walk on the you know thin blade of between chaos and order in those groups or online group settings like independently yeah. of what kind of groups they are it's like because you know it's like what what are what are the rules and what are the boundaries the, the structures that you mentioned you know what, what uh, it's like what are the levels the people are operating on and yeah. so that to make that sure it's like it's complicated on you know online i think yeah you don't you don't want to fall too too much into the orderly structure because then there's no flow and then there's no exchange of of new information no, no things that could could emerge and then on the other side if it's too much chaos then the, you know then there's also no benefit to it Mm -hmm. and so to find yeah. the right the right balance of all these things it's important i think oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah well i noticed that you know in facebook invented it here you have a technology and, and it's like everybody is connected suddenly um and you know from all over and, and like you haven't seen your friends i hadn't seen my friends in canada for many years and and i see them and they're all married and they have kids and the beards and, and pot bellies and they're monstrous <laughs> apparitions of what they once were when they were young and beautiful. And it was like, who is that? Oh my God. <laughs> but, but, it, and, but now you're in contact with them. So you're in contact with your whole history of relationships, um, which is maybe it's the problem is that you're not, you're not, you don't let things die. You know what I mean? You don't let yeah, sure. like, mm -hmm. there are the, you, you I mean, you have to let things die. You have to let relationships die to have new relationships. You have to, but if you if you have this record of everything, um... I find that so interesting because it's like because the internet is still quite young, and I'm always fascinated by the fascinated by the thought. Okay, so let's imagine like 500 years in the future, and so yeah. and then and then you could you know it's like at some point living in the future you could say oh no i want to see you know the life of my grand grand grandfather what he did and then yeah. you just open up the vaults and then you see all you know the timelines the tweets the videos you know all that what was stored online if it's it like, doesn't get it's destroyed like a, in a eternal, nuclear accident yeah you, you have to zoom out to see what it's about if you're just like in it in the within the internet you know it's like without thinking about what what is actually happening it's a it's a history it's a it's 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 history in the making and so yeah. if you it's like at some point in the future we will have a, a nearly complete document of what the what the past was at least to a certain point you know it's yeah. like it, that would that could be interesting if i could or in thousand years I, like i could see uh the lives of my grand 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 great father you yeah, know maybe see. somebody will be watching this 
in right. 500 years uh, just because they want to explore who their who their ancestors were in the in the uh, early 21st century that's insane yeah or, I always you know, use this example of the Beatles because I mean there was television you know in the 60s but there were no music videos as we know it there were no music television stations but yeah. they made this video the strawberry fields and it was revolutionary because it was in that high definition high high concept version it was one of the first ones and so but they had no use for it and that's important that like in 66 they had no really use for it but now it's on youtube it has like 100 millions of views they couldn't have known that right and so no. it's like and that's so interesting to me like how how we produce things especially like technology related. And then if you zoom out, the so strange things appear. And so I think, yeah. I think the well, that's what is... kind of happened with that new video that they did, right? That Beatles. new, uh, that, that new production that was created by uh, the guy who did the Hobbit, uh, where, where they dug up all kinds of old stuff and kind of made a reality TV show about them making their last uh, album. What do you mean, the Peter Jackson documentary? Yeah, the Peter Jackson thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which was like, it's kind of, a, which was like, which was like every aspect of their life that right. was ever recorded. At least know, in a period on, of time. On yet. film mm -hmm. is, is now, uh, is now historical document, right? You know, and, uh, well, I guess there's still more stuff that hasn't come out, but. But you also, but as you said, it's also fake. It's very clear that that is fake. You mean that it's 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 uh, put together? Yeah, yeah, right. No, it's no, like, no, no. That's yeah, why a reality TV show is fake. It's like fake reality. No, yeah. the, the all the biographers of Paul McCartney they agree that he likes to alter history, and so he always tells you know increasingly with the years he tells stories differently. Not and maybe. And so, like, you have to imagine, even if it was like ten hours of documentary footage, like you know, in that movie in the three-parter there are 50 hours that are not in there yeah. right and so it's like there's a lot of bickering and anger and all the other stuff that does that didn't make like the happy-go-lucky cut of the movie that we saw right well, of course and so and uh but but again they might make a new movie they could they could make an entirely this is that's interesting because they could make an entirely different movie right about the same people <laughs> yeah, it would that's... tell an entirely different history of the Beatles. <laughs> so there's not just one history of the Beatles. It's like you can make up the history of the Beatles. It's a shooting us cat kind of situation. Yeah, exactly. It's like mm. it's like Paul and you know, did did Paul were Paul and John friends or enemies? You know, it, you know, <laughs> the answer is both and neither, right? <laughs> or yeah. whatever. Right? Yeah, um, exactly. And uh -huh. so I, I find that utterly interesting. That is Schwed Schrodinger's cat. That's that's hilarious. That's fantastic. Yeah, but then again, it's like I, I think if you have a topic like what's the origin of religion, or, or any topic, you have to abstain from it is that. Yeah. Did Yoko so, break up the Beatles? Yes, yes and and yes, no. Yes, and, and neither. So, exactly, yeah. and both. <laughs> and both. <laughs> and both. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. that's a, it's it's a mindfuck because it's like a paradox to process yeah. both yes and no at the same time. But I think that's a true, you know, integral, uh, you know, approach to this. I just had a hilarious image where, because I, I once went to a Zen retreat with a 97-year-old Zen master named Sazaki Roshi, and he was sitting there in the retreat, and I was meditating in the morning, and I had to go see him, and he rang the bell, and he gave me a koan. Like, this is your koan, and, you know, like, what is the sound of one hand clapping, or does a dog do moo, or the usual Zen koans, right? He gave right. me a koan. I won't talk about what that is. But, but what if the koan was... Um, what if the koan he gave was uh, did you, was it was it did, did Yoko Ono break up the Beatles? <laughs> You're like meditating in the dark. Was it Yoko? <laughs> yeah, and I would be like meditating for seven days on a mountain in the dark. Was it Yoko or was, yeah. it, was it was it not Yoko? Is Yoko evil or is Yoko good? What is good and evil? And you would have this existential understanding, and you would say it was both or neither. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's super interesting because yeah. you know if you look at a thing like like this like a like a mouse 
you know mm -hmm. it seems it seems like a concretized and condensed form but in reality it's 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 energy there are no little atoms flying around with electrons like these are like waves of, of fields of potentiality and so but we we're, we're treating this as if if that's solid i don't know yeah. that's our way of dealing with energy and it's like but in reality it's, it's it's way more complex and it's the same thing with topics like religion or people they're just fields of possibility you know and then you condense consent condense it and crystallize it this way and that way to to make like working narratives out of this but it's like who is somebody It's yeah. like you can be, it's like this famous example of Jordan Peterson. You can be with somebody in a relationship like for 10 years and think you know that person. Then the person cheats on you or does something weird. And then you're confronted yeah. with the fact that, oh, shit, I don't know who that is. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so, and so. I, I, yeah, because because we only, well, I guess it's we only, we have a perspective on what reality is, which is kind of provisional. Which yeah. allows us to allows us to function in the world. Yeah. So it's a provisional understanding, but it's not it's not the ultimate perspective. Obviously, it's just our perspective, and uh, and and each perspective is a limitation. So we need heuristics uh, to, to 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 figure out stuff. So what we do is we put a lot of perspectives. You know, if we're intelligent, you know. You know We we uh, this is I I got this from Dennis Schmachtenberger actually he says you, it's a transperspectival you put a lot of perspectives together yeah and then you have a three dimensional picture uh, right. of reality uh, uh, even though it's not a perspective uh, it's it's not a truth it's not an absolute it's just the closest thing you can you can get to yeah. to the truth for you in that moment right um, so it's a transperspectival uh, perspective rather than a perspective. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I mean, it's like when you, you need to process different and sometimes conflicting models about the world at the same time. So, so you have a positive, positive, positivist view on everything is kind of developing an evolutionary or even like a Hegelian perspective on the world. And then you have to have also like the, the negation of that. No, everything is always as it was. And like maybe mm -hmm. technology is developing, but, you know, you the, the majority of people, you know, you could take now and put them in the fifth century and they wouldn't really have an uh, you know the problem of adapting to that society you know because you might just go mad right yeah no it's like because it's like that's a, the nihilist the, the pessimist approach it's like no that's like from from Schopenhauer which is always like the same we're not you're not moving anywhere you know and and so I think mm -hmm. to have both kind of perspectives at the same time then then you get like this this more broad view on things so yeah you have, you have a you have two contradictory perspectives which are at the same time true true and contradictory right and yeah. both sometimes true it's like it's, it's you do not know the principia discordia the book of malaclips of uh, the younger no and and so that is like a parody book but it contains very deep spiritual uh, uh um, notions and so what does uh, malaclips says everything is at the same time true And at other times false, and at other times true and false, and at other times uh, false and false. And so he he, he weaves like this. Uh, maybe I find it. It's so it's hilarious. You don't know the Principia Discordia? I've heard that name, but I, I don't know what it is. No. You mean it's a, it's it's sort of a it's a it's a parody of of a deep spiritual text or something? Is yeah, it's it absolutely. Is? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, do I find it? Everything is true. Ah, here it is. Um, give me a sec. Where is it? All sta okay, I give it to you now. Um, all statements are true in some sense, false in some sense, meaningless in some sense, true and false in some sense, true and meaningless in some sense, <laughs> false and meaningless in some sense, and true and false and meaningless in some sense. <laughs> <laughs> in some sense. You have to add in some sense to every statement that you make in some sense. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, it just shows you just like there's an end to, to the logical endeavor, right? It's like it's just, it's just a big masturbation at a certain yeah. point, right? Because it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't lead anywhere. 
yeah uh, and, 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 and and it only leads to absurdity yeah i was thinking you know it's like our our way of dealing with with history and with past and future i had like this this i was like come, uh, having a coffee and was going home and then i was thinking about you know that the universe is is kind of a super computer in order to explain its own big bang and origin you know mm -hmm. it's like uh, so we are always bound you know to history making and to future endeavors in 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 some sense in some <laughs> sense you know and so <laughs> and so i you know <laughs> That's true in some that, sense and not true yeah, in another sense. Yeah, and meaningless in some, in sense. some sense <laughs> and meaningful in some sense and false in some sense and all of this. And in this some sense, Yoko is really the cause of the, the Beatles falling apart. And in some sense, it's really John who, you know, who did it. And then in some sense, it's Ringo. And in other senses, it's it's Paul. Yeah. You know, or then maybe exactly. George. In some sense, it was all George's fault. Uh, yeah. In some sense, it was all Yoko. Yo Yo anyway. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, but I always what i wanted to say is it's like and also i think that's like a like a spiritual thought from the f philosophical traditions and, and and spiritual traditions and you know our relationship with the future because we kind of tend to separate ourselves from the future you know it's like as distinct selves but i yeah. think you know it's like if you really think about it you can't really you make a difference between your future self and the future world you want to live in and so it's like i i think i've read it like last week with hegel when when he, he says somewhere that uh thought and dasein are somewhat the same right and so the the notion of of you know spiritual traditions that you know you have to find a unity between subject and object and and atman and brahman and so it's like if you think about a future of yours let's say you know like mm -hmm. you your, your future in two years and then you think about okay what you would be in two years so you you can't really separate those two things you know a future world and because it's you that's creating the future but you can also only create that future when you change because it's like you're creating reality like your cognitive and social reality in some sense <laughs> in some mm. sense and so you just can't <laughs> stop saying that you need that qualification because because uh, because otherwise you'd be committing to you know a, a, a reified truth right and you never want to commit to a reified truth because then then you're stuck on and then it's going to be it's going to exactly haunt you. So exactly you, say, you say some sense all the time so then you nobody can get you and say oh he yeah. said that <laughs> <laughs> No, but we, what I want to say is that we are, in some sense, we are not like fixed yeah. things. We are like we yeah. like transforming all the time, yeah. and with that, our our future kind of transforms. And that's so. The, the problem then is the com combinatorial explosion, right? Uh, that John Reiki talks about. We have an infinite amount of possibilities and and potentials and 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 perspectives. And yeah. what do we do? Um. And that's, I guess, the ethics. That's where kind of ethics move, ethics comes in. in some sure. Sense. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do we do? So, what right. is Viveki's solution for that? Uh, his his solution, he calls it re relevance realization. We have to take all of these things and 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 figure out what's relevant in every moment. Right. Yeah. Um, do do? we have to do, do opponent do processing and we have to take in, into account the the different perspectives that are operating and then yeah. get very good you know in the way a martial arts artist would be get very good uh uh at 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 um at, at knowing what is relevant otherwise there's just insanity right if we don't have yeah. that if we don't have that filter and i've known schizophrenic people they don't have relevance realization they don't know the difference between like the television uh they think the television is speaking to them because they 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 don't know what is relevant and what is not that that falls away so we have a choice between relevant realization and insanity i think yeah mm. it's interesting yeah. so uh that's i can't I mean he, he does that a whole thing with with cognitive science but i think that's also kind of the point of meditation because we become so hyper saturated with information especially today we're, we're saturated with information so our relevance realization machinery goes off 
It, it can't yeah. it can't function because we we're we're super saturated. So we we need meditation in the same way we need to like clear out our our bowels. You know, we need to take a shit because we have so much garbage in us in ourselves, right? So yeah. we have so much. So I, I think that's why, like, you know, before they invented gyms so that people would go to the gym and, and lift, you know, they had to do that because we had that sedentary lifestyle. So yeah. today, almost this, the, the, there's, there needs to be a way to empty yourself properly so that you can go between, you can, you can deal with the complexity of life and, and, and the super saturated uh, fields of, of inf- information. Yeah. I don't know. It's like I'm, you know, I'm still hung up a little bit on, 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 you know, gr- group dynamics and profilicity and mm-hmm. social media because if you look at, you know, it's, I, I think like if you look at just Jordan Peterson or Russell Brand, right, and yeah. and I, I increasingly feel that they are becoming caricatures of themselves, not because they are like not decent beings, but because they're playing the social media game too much, you know. That's like. To, to call a podcast that you have with Waveki the most important conversation that might destroy God or whatever it was called, you know, uh, so important that it might uh, change the world itself. It's like, no, you don't say that about your own podcast. Mm-hmm. You, you know well, what I'm saying? I don't know if that's marketing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, but he's, co- he's, he's, you know, he's communicating in that way. And Russell Brandt is, is if he's just screaming at this point. You know, it's just like, oh, well, I, I find but you that... never knew about Pfizer. It's like, OK, get a grip on reality, man. Yeah, okay? I see what you mean. And so it's like well, it's it's so... an audience capture and all that. And, you know, it's like, OK, so so once you become a certain le- you, you reach a certain level of fame to a certain extent, you, you do become a caricature of yourself. It happens to every famous person. Right. And so how do you keep that the your spirit alive when you're always having to uh you know feed something back to, we always have to you're always having to feed the beast yeah but right? we're all because we're living in this age of profilicity it's just like i just took two examples but it affects all of us we all risk that doing that. like huh we risk well, generating uh, uh, into that no we're living as 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 you as you can't uh escape the meta modern era we're living in you can't escape being exposed to uh um, social media and enact via social media and so it's like we're doing the same thing or just on a way smaller scale you know and so yeah. how and that that's the question how do you have these heuristics you were talking about and have the proper rituals and the the thing while at the same time being exposed to this machinery yeah, and you can't yeah. even you can't even tell if 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 the machinery is your appendix or if uh, if you are the appendix of the machinery at this point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think uh, yeah, all that has to be worked out because it's a massive paradigm shift, technological shift. So we can't just we can't just apply an operating system, a religious operating system from, you know. I mean, if you if you if you take seriously what Alexander says, all everything is religion, right? So we could say that modernity is one kind of religion, in some uh, sense. In some sense, exactly. <laughs> uh, in some sense, no, for sure, because everything is not religion. We need to distinguish between religion and not religion. <laughs> but in some sense, everything is religion. Uh, so we have to say that okay. So so the the religion of modernity of the 20th century is inadapt is is uh, it, can, it cannot adapt to the 21st century. So that, that we have to reprogram that to some sense. Yeah. But we but the problem is we do with revolution is you is you want to reprogram it by violently destroying what came in the past and that doesn't work. So you have to bring you have to bring what came in the past into the into the present and kind of reinvent it. And that's kind of the the razor's edge. I think it's like yeah. Uh, um, that's why I think Renaissance is more appropriate than 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 revolution in this particular. Time. What do you mean with that Renaissance in this context? A Renaissance means like okay, the Renaissance was a time when people rediscovered all kinds of things, but also reinvented it at the same time. Okay. Mm. A revolution is when you try to destroy the whole, you know, the, the the old order, right? Mostly violently, and then you you're just in the same circle where you know uh, you're, you're in the same Ouroboros of the snake eating his tail. You're still you know uh, yeah so so um but in terms of peterson i, I think that i, I peterson and uh you know I, I don't listen to russell brand that much so i don't know what 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 he's up to um yeah you get kind of brilliant guys like that 
who become rock stars. So, so, so I, I've noticed like how I reacted Jordan Peterson is that like, I, 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 I have the same respect for him as, as before, but I noticed that there's two different versions of him, right? There's the political beast that he is. Uh, and then there's the guy who's having these interesting conversations and, 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 and I say, okay, oh, that's Peterson, the political beast doing his political beast thing. And I'm, I'm less interested in that. Sometimes I find that interesting because it's good to have a conservative voice in the mix. Um, but not usually. And then there's other times where I, I think, okay, well, you know, some of the conversations I thought he had with John, with John were, were really very, very interesting, whatever the marketing is. Like I thought that they were very alive and so, 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 but I think, I think our, the tendency is to say, oh, Jordan Peterson sells out or something like that, or, or he is an asshole now when he was good, good before. Mm -hmm. I think he's, I think he's exactly the same guy as he was before with the same strengths and weaknesses. It's just that they all get exaggerated and we have to be like for or against, right? Him in some kind of a way. And, and that's, and so, so, oh, he's sold out and he's bad and, or, or or, or 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 he's 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 the messiah of of Western civilization, right? Those are extreme perspectives, uh, um, and and you you, don't, you can't take either one of them. I think if 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 I could give my two cents on this, because I think that at least for me, and I think for a lot of other people, the main the uh, the original attraction was that you know going back to this model of 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 Hans Möller that. He came on the scene playing the authentic game, right? So he was the 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 college, the university professor with the holy wrath, you know, and so he was like all engaging, all authentic. And he was like struggling with the social media system. Then then came its breakdown, his breakdown, and he came back playing the the game of profilicity. And so that that's the you know what I'm saying it's like maybe I, but but I but I want to re react against that because I don't think that there's been this much change in him it's more like how he's perceived and that how he's how how he presents himself on the media but but if I you think go through his work he's saying the same shit he said in maps and meaning and he he's he's just he's he's just working on the same insights that he he had in in the beginning when he's doing his real intellectual discussions when he's doing polit his political discussions, I think he's being a bit of a reactionary. But you know, you know, but, that's not but what I mean. That's not what I mean. I mean okay. uh, his his the self importance that he is communicating with the stuff that he's already saying. You know, it's like the, there's a there's a layer of self importance that he communicates that wasn't there before, and maybe that's just the, the effect of becoming that super famous. Yeah, but it's I like that's that's Maybe for me right. it's kind of off putting. That's that's the reason why I don't engage with his videos anymore. Not because of the content, but because how he talks now. It's like it's super self important, and it's like no. no. Sometimes I, I feel that, and sometimes so I would say yeah. I would say, uh, what's the phrase again? I forgot our phrase. Uh, in some sense, yes, and in some <laughs> sense, no. <laughs> Because <laughs> I want to defend him because I think he's incredibly brave, uh, you know, and every and, and it's so easy, to, it's so cliche and easy to 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 attack him. Uh, but I but I do I do think he has weaknesses. No, but I wanted to make clear that I'm that I'm not critiquing him. Yeah, but I'm 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 taking him him as an example of how we all operate because it's so apparent on him. Yes. He's just a symbol of what we are all kind of doing in the, in this kind of space. Yeah, you know, it's like and so. And because it's like every time that we are doing this podcast, we're using isms instead of having this humility, you know, saying, okay, it's like, maybe that's just not true what we are saying. It's like we're trying, we're trying, we're, we're having, we should be more aware of that we're using heuristics and, and, and trying to tangentially touching whatever truth there is. But it's like we're never we're never really touching. It's like yes and no at the same yeah, that, time. You, you, and so so we are, because as as soon as you in, engage with social media and Zoom and all this shit, you, you you're playing this game of profilicity. And just like I think Peterson and you know Brand, they're just over amplified phenomenons of what we all encounter. That's my argument. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we're starting this conversation about but crypto I, dynamics. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, you know, everybody has that's the thing like you, you, there's a way that everybody there's there's this is the insight I get from Gerard is the scapegoat mechanism is very powerful. I, whether you agree with everything Gerard says and 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 it's always an operation in us. So 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 we have this powerful need to 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 amplify and and just, you know, prop up and destroy and we have to be and you have to be very careful all the time not to do those things right not to prop up and and, not, and, and destroy people not to scapegoat people not to get sucked into this terrible terrible game and because we because yes indeed like like it's a mirror of us right right whatever phenomenon you're you're describing with these two people is is that that's our mirror that's the mirror of who we that's, are that's what i mean yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah 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 and so uh so so um so what you know and i think what you're saying is we need to you know it's like go back to so- socrates and you know like this is dialogue and and we're di- we're we're working with the logos we, we don't we don't give definitions and, and recipes of behavior um where we're, we're, we we invoke the logos and and play with it to get to 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 have a creative discussion and not be captured by uh by memes or ideologies or by or isms our yes. own bullshit by isms yes or other people's bullshit exactly or, or, or and, and we we can't win like we're we are we the, the humility maybe you're talking about is like we're fucked we can't get it right it's messy we can get very there, good at no dan- dancing dance, exactly. in the chaos, but we can't control the chaos. No, there are no different different answers. There aren't. It's just heuristics and you know things that we can approach and get you know preliminary pictures of. But it's like we never we're never really touching the truth. We're never penetrating the truth of things. But but can, but the maybe the question well a couple of questions come is like can we penetrate the the, the truth of things do you want to do you want to just is that just a relativistic view? Um, I guess it's a question of essentiality and so is there no essence to anything and and you know uh, like, like Peterson would say okay like the postmodern modernists understood that that that, that everything is com- combinatorial explosive and 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 uh, and that each perspective is 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 limited and there's infinite perspectives but at the same time there are some perspectives that are better than other perspectives sure mm-hmm. so how do we how do we get the best perspective and what's the best perspective and i would say that that's a dynamic thing that's not like we're going to come to a conclusion about what the best perspective is but we're going to keep uh our ethics engaged in a dynamic process so if we're yes. talking about what is courageousness or something it's not like we're going to define what that is because it depends on the context but we we do have a notion of courageousness which we believe to be true makes sense so let me give an as a metaphor you know it's like because we're talking about group dynamics like it doesn't really matter what kind of groups but you know it's like what we're talking about is you know an engagement of open systems right mm-hmm. And not closed systems, but as soon as people come together acting as closed systems, then there is like, there's no playfulness, there's no dialogos, there's no, you know, playful searching for the truth and the knowing, okay, there's maybe no truth, but that's exactly the reason why we can find some truth, you know, this kind of paradoxical interplay. Mm -hmm. And so you only have that. Uh, with when when you're approaching a topic in a group or you know a setting as open systems it's like okay we don't know there is no truth but that's the very reason we can find it it's you know what i'm saying this performatist notion you know after, yeah after... but that but that's but i'm slightly criticizing that because i think there is truth it's just truth is not something that is static and and uh um uh, stuck anywhere I think we're meaning the same thing, just in different words, because I would agree with okay. you here. Okay, okay, okay. Because it's a okay. process. I, I, I'm, I'm, re, I'm referring to Eshelman, you know, who says, okay, the in, in, in modernism you have like the idea that truth is something fixed, right? Uh-huh. The thing. Mm-hmm. 
And then you have the postmodern critique that says, okay, there is no truth. Yeah. Right. And then you have the performatist or post postmodern approach. It's like, okay, we take both of these things. Um, we know there is no truth, but that's the reason we, we can engage in a dialectical process of, you know, approaching truth, finding truth, creating truth. We know it's not true. We make it true. And so you're in this kind of process of, of, of creating beauty and truth and, and all of this. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can buy that. Yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. buy that. In well, some no, but, but I mean, there is part of me that is still feeling that that's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a level of postmodernism in that view, which avoids engagement with truth um, and the absolute or, or whatever. Right. Cause there's no absolute. Um, but is there an absolute, is there, is there, you know, that, that I guess that's the question. And if, if and, like, and, is, is there like an ontological truth? That's what you're talking about in some sense. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. 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 But in like, some sense, you can never know that. That's the whole point of it. Maybe that's act, faith. Maybe you, you can, can know act, it if you're enlightened, if you have that yeah, but experience and you can say, Andrew, I, what I, I mean it. is that, sorry, but that's performatism. You act as if there is truth. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. Well, that, yeah, I agree with that. Like you act as, so, but you do have to have a, a notion of truth. You can't throw that out the window. No, but you act, but you can never know if it is. That's the difference. Um, you act as if. Okay. But maybe you can know if it is. Can, can. Can you? I, in I, some I, sense, maybe. I don't know. Maybe if you have faith, <laughs> that's what faith means in, in a way. You know, you, you, that's what, that's what people mean when they say they believe or, you know, in something. It's a kind of, it's like faith is like, it's not faith in some thing that's fixed. It's like the process of faith. In some sense, I could agree to this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's very good, uh, Tom, that we agree with each other in some sense. <laughs> I think we got it, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really good, actually.